excited to, to, to hear. Uh, they basically, I heard from Prav, and Prav has like a, an EOS meetup, right? Yeah. And what EOS they want one. to promote is decentralized applications, which was supposed to be today's class, and that's why I told you to come today. Um, we also have one of the members who has a Miami City token, which from what I heard so far, relates to one of the voting projects that you guys are trying to do with blockchain. But I also have, uh, I'm gonna have uh, Moises talk about the Miami City token. I'm gonna have Prav talk about his experience. He has launched a few startup startups. He has one ICO pitches, so he's gonna talk about the elements of an ICO. He also is gonna be talking about something that I don't wanna review, an offer that he has. And uh, just to start, Prav, if you wanna come on in and sure. talk to the class. So I, I went to UM also UF too. I did an engineering UF in my finance and English at UF. So yeah, super excited to be here. Um, can you put that on here? I can put this, the beat up? Yeah, just that. Yeah, so I, I'm the uh, co-founder. I'm Praveen Alamanchi, Prav's my, my nickname. I'm the co-founder of EOS Miami. So EOS is the fourth largest cryptocurrency by market cap and did the largest ICO in history, the $4 billion ICO. So of that $4 billion, $1 billion is going to be used as a VC fund to fund app developers, and $200 million a year is going to be used to be fund meetups and also open source projects over the local group. So the, the, the advantage of doing something like this is there's one global ICO so that if you're a small-time app developer or any app developer, you don't have to do your own ICO. You can just go directly to the embedded VC. There's actually like a, uh, and that's the purpose of US Miami is to help local app developers get funding and, uh, and spread the knowledge of the US. So US per se is, is generally uh, geared towards app developers. Like you wouldn't generally buy US as a, just as a, a store value like Bitcoin. You would actually use US if you're an app developer. So US can, um, support 4,000 transactions per second, while something like Ethereum supports 30 transactions per second. So it's really like, if you want something scalable, that's what we're doing in the US. So a lot of people in Miami who are, who are making dApps were originally on Ethereum, now we're moving over to the US, so we're, we're kind of supporting that, that process. So Diego said uh, to talk about some of our ICO pitches. So I'm sure you guys uh, have heard of eMerge America. So we did a uh, pitch at eMerge this year. And a couple years ago, I won the early stage startup contest for a previous startup. And actually, my main office is in Silicon Valley. I've sold a few startups. And I'm a part-time filmmaker in LA, so I have two separate lives. But yeah, I'm from Miami. I, you know, my parents live here, so I'm here a lot. So I always try to uh, support the Miami community. We have, actually have something called the Miami Mafia. It's all the people from Miami who live in California. And we all support each other. So if you ever make it out to Miami, you can, you'll have uh, someone to talk to, and we'll show you guys around. So we'll go into the first pitch. So this, uh, this one first? Yeah, that one's loaded. Yes, this, this is our pitch for the Comcast Lips Labs. It's kind of like a version of Shark Tank, but more startup-y. So Mr. Wonderful is the uh, founder of this. So they had they had a booth at uh, Emerge this year, so this is our Mr. pitch. Mr. Wonderful, Jovo? What? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Mr. Wonderful? Yeah, Mr. Wonderful. So basically... He's the guy from Shark Tank. Oh, Shark Tank. Oh, I thought it was you. Yeah, because Mr. Wonderful. Oh. So one of, one of the one, some of the most successful blockchain companies in Miami are, are gaming companies. So we were actually one of the ten companies chosen to pitch at the first ever blockchain gamer conference in San Francisco earlier this year. So this is our game. We actually have a social impact game for dog for dog to dog lovers. So this is our pitch for Comcast and Blabsy. Hi, I'm Kriyal Amachi, the co-founder and CTO of WhoopAtMe.com. We're the social network for dogs and dog owners. And what we've built is a really cool platform for dogs and dog lovers to become friends with each other and go on dog dates and actually interact with each other. We also built a series of really cool games that exist in the real world and offline as well. And the connecting technology to the real world and offline is blockchain. So our interesting aspect of blockchain, there's, there's a few blockchain projects already, already out there for pets. They're all like virtual pets, right? Our actual blockchain project uh, has a virtual pet that's related to a real world pet in a no kill animal shelter. So if you feed a virtual dog in our platform, you're actually feeding a real dog in a real no kill animal shelter. So multiple people can get together to adopt a dog, feed a dog, and 
play games and actually support these shelters and real dogs. And, and uh, even if you don't want to play the game, we're creating a plugin so other dog-friendly applications and uh, <coughs> stores can actually help donate through our blockchain algorithm to actually support uh, dogs throughout the world in no-kill shelters. So we're modeling about $100 million of revenue in two years. And we have a good start. We already built MVP. You can go sign up for it. We'll put your dog on on our platform. We'll get you.com. Thank you. So, why Lotus is second site? Why Lotus is second site? I'll, I'll I tell you. It doesn't open here. This one. So, that's fine. So, you, you guys can look at this on your own. But uh, I, we, we were uh, the only company in Miami who actually won the crowd voting contest for ICO Box. It's the largest like crowdfunding platform for ICO. So we made um, a free blockchain project. Um, so we had a white paper video, so I was gonna show you that, but I'll just talk about it. So the important thing about an, about an ICO pitch, if you're pitching in front of VCs or anyone, right, the number one question, your, your first question you're gonna be asked is, why, why blockchain, right? The second question is, why an ICO? Right? You know, if, if, if you have to have a bunch of like, you can't be, you know, fumbling around because you know it's expected you have an answer off the top of your head, right? If you can take the the, the, the term blockchain and replace it with database, it's the exact same thing. That you're not a blockchain company, you're, and you're definitely not a blockchain startup. So, what is what are some good answers, right? You know, you know, I'll give you an example from from blockchain gaming because we just uh, talked about blockchain game. So, you know, one of the things about blockchain. I kind of see it as almost like a, you know, the first new art or tech genre since the invention of hip hop, hip hop, right? And I say that a little bit grandiose, but also it catches people's attention. That's kind of what you want to do in a pitch as well. So, you know, like hip hop, it took about five years for people to realize that it was actually a brand new thing. You know, it wasn't something like similar to something I lost before. It was actually a new art form. And I see blockchain as the same thing. So, for a blockchain game, for example, right? If I if I buy Madden, right, you know, just my me buying Madden, I can't make my own version of Madden. I can't say Madden Pro. But a blockchain game, you totally can, right? I can take CryptoKitties and make CryptoKitties Pro version too. As long as I use, I don't use the same exact name. I can use all the source code, all the assets, everything, and make my own game. So basically, the concept of remixing is something really huge in blockchain gaming. It's the same thing just like with hip hop too, where people used to say, well, you're just sampling other people and realize that too. So the ethos of that open sourcing remixing thing, you know, you know, Electronic Arts would never let you make your own version of Madden, but you know, you totally are encouraged to do that in blockchain games. And why is that a thing, right? So if I have a virtual cat in in in, uh, in your game, per se, right? If someone else has a game that uses your cat, there's more value for your cat because you can use more own game. And also the fact that the cat lives on the blockchain, doesn't live in your servers, it actually has provenance, you know, something actually, someone actually really owns it. So if, if that cat gets, somehow gets destroyed in my game, it's destroyed in your game as well, so it's a real thing. So people like Magic League are actually looking at uh, blockchain for their, for their, their, their type of uh, scenarios because a hologram is just a digital object, but that hologram is on the blockchain, all of a sudden that becomes a real object. So. It was a. Uh, if you guys have questions, you know, I'll be here. If you have any questions right now, I'll answer them. We actually have two more speakers. I want to take over the whole class. Okay. So I'm on your site right now, and I still don't think I fully understand. What site are you on? The US? Oh, Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I, I'm not quite understanding this concept. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so basically, you know, if you've ever been to an animal shelter, you know that the animals are in glass cubes, right? And sometimes they have little, like, messages saying, you know, I, you know, about the personality of cat or dog, per se. So we took the concept of, well, people want to, sometimes people just visit the animal shelter, right? Just to play with the dogs, look at dogs or cats, but they don't have the ability to adopt or, you know, they already have too many cats already, you want to be the cat, cat man, cat lady, right? Yeah. But they do want to support, so. So you have several concepts. One is we have a like Dog Town USA that we're, we're producing. It's an HTML5 game. So it's kind of like an like overlay of Monopoly, but instead of like Monopoly, it's all, all dog based type of things too. And so anything in the game, you actually have to use the, 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 uh, the wolf, the wolf <coughs> shoots. 
and then those woodfields can also be used for dog friendly um, businesses as well. The other concept is, um, you know, if you ever go to um, live streaming sites or Periscope, you, know, you can give people hearts. So you want to do the same thing. If, if an animal shelter sets up a live stream or webcam at the uh, at the booth, you can actually like give um, treats to the dogs, and, and the treats you give, the virtual gifts you give to the dogs, are actually have value that the animal shelter can use to help feed the dog. The so there's a lot of things we're having is where you know, the virtual dogs in our games are actually are real dogs in real animal shelters, and also uh, taking that aspect. So how is blockchain applicable? So there's two things. One is the actual gifting economy. Mm -hmm. So it's really, you know, people used to say, you know, you know, what's big in Japan right now too? You know, and that's that's what's gonna be big here in, in a couple of years. But now it's 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 literally like months, you know. So what's really big in Korea and big in Japan right now in blockchain and in gaming as well is is mobile HTML5 games, <coughs> telegram games or other type of games. And the way that people are monetizing that, it's almost like the old farm bill. If you guys remember farm bill from Zynga from Facebook, right? People used to buy a lot of in-app, you know, things, right? The same concept is happening now for Telegram games, where people are, but the biggest thing is people are gifting things to each other, too. So it's really big for, like, uh, like cosplay models and stuff in, in Japan and Korea. So basically, rather than giving someone, like, a dollar, tipping someone a dollar, right, you know, which has a lot of, like, implications, you know, you're just giving someone a virtual gift. So if I give if I give him a virtual Corvette as a as a gift, right? That virtual Corvette actually has some provenance and some scarcity and some some um, <coughs> some uh, monetary value. So I'm basically I can give him a five dollar Corvette and, and he can take that and take it to the marketplace and sell for five dollars minus the transaction fee. So part of the part of the reason why this is really working is that there's two things. One is the casino effect. Or you know, if you go to a casino, you're not using real money. You're actually just you know, you're using fake money. It makes you want to spend more. You don't have that. But the other thing is, um, uh, it, 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 since it's an in-app purchase, just like it's like a Zynga thing, a lot of games, a lot of our friends who have games now, they're doing the whole ICO process. So if instead of selling a token, they're selling you virtual goods, which actually have like limited. So Crypto Space Commander is a prime example of that. They have a you can buy a spaceship, and a spaceship will have limited limited number of spaceships ever issued. So it's that kind of So this is never gonna be an ICO, but it's gonna have value too. So let me, let me just uh, say, let me get voices to come up. So we're gonna have a few minutes here. But you're doing oh, great. Yeah, that's <laughs> what, internships? Oh yeah, well, let, I'll just, oh, let, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we actually have internships available too. But, uh, and actually this is, um, you can go as Yes. Take your voice. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here for numerous reasons. One, because I'm an alumni from, from the school, so it's always a pleasure to come back. I graduated a few years ago, 82. <laughs> and there weren't as many buildings back at 82, I can tell you that much. Um, so a little bit about me. My name is Moises Kaba. I am the chairman of the board of ID Money and Miami City Token. I'm also a lawyer. I've been in this community since 1965. Been a lawyer for it's going to be 33 years. Also an accountant for about 35 years. So a lot of ties to this community, and those ties are what really interested me in this project that we're involved in, which is a little different than your typical ICO projects. And how many are familiar with blockchain uh, technology that's used with Bitcoin and? Litecoin, Ethereum, well, this has nothing to do with that, <laughs> okay? It's a totally different concept because the business model for ID Money and Miami Token, I'll show you just the site up here, um, is to create a community token. And it's a community token with a social purpose, which is, I think, the first community token with a social purpose. And that is really unique. We're not selling anything. We're not raising capital. What we're doing is we're trying to create a, a, a method which would create prosperity to the local communities. And to take this business model and implement it in different communities. Now, obviously, when you create anything, and I think he was talking about it now, you get your virtual car, 
has certain value by, by the mere fact that you created it. And I'm sure that that's also the, the case with the token, but that's not the main purpose of the token. The token is finite. It has 35 million tokens that are being issued per community. We have two pilot communities right now. One is right here, which is the city of Miami, and the other one is New York. Now, each city token has 35 million. It has a social component too, because it's about seven million of these tokens, which is 20% of the allotted total volume of the, of the tokens is being dedicated to the homeless, which is a specific sector, all right? The other 80% is divided among different groups, which are founders, and pilot programs that we have, which one of the pilot programs is for the universities, because we wanna get the students involved in providing services to the community and to the company to expand the scope of the of the token and what it provides. So there's opportunities for everybody. So for example, you could be a provider for the for the token, for the City City Miami token. Uh, you could be someone who merely wants to speculate with it. If that's what you desire, that's not what we do. All we do is we look for people that are willing to give give services in exchange for receipt of the tokens and that are willing to provide services to the community with those tokens. So let's take myself an example. I'm an attorney. So in my practice, I've allowed uh, the tokens to be implemented. So if anybody has a legal need, they can actually pay me with tokens. And if you don't have tokens, then you can go get tokens. You get tokens from other people that have it, and you can purchase it from directly, or you can go to an exchange. The, uh, the token is listed on the token store and you can buy it there independently. But as a company, we don't sell anything. What we look for is providers. So if you're a graphic designer, and we need graphic design work, you're willing to become a provider for the city token, then we will pay you in tokens. And we will pay you generously because of the, of the nature that we recognize as a startup and it's speculative. So we wanna get the more providers in the group, the more scope that the token has, the more value that it creates for the for the community, and the more we can help the specific social sectors that we've identified. So the concept is different because we're not selling anything. What we're looking is for people who want to get actively involved in the community. In addition to the fact that we, we have the setup, which is the business model we provide, we also provide the, the technical support and the, the, the literature and the business model for these local community tokens to take off. We provide an app, and that app will, is given freely. It's an open source app that we provide to all the communities. And with this app, you can tell who's a provider in your area. You can tell um, if you want to look for by, by sectors. Uh, it, it will be regulated by a local association, which can only be made up of local members in the community. You can't have someone from New York in the in the association here in, in Miami and vice versa. So it has and it has all the flexibility that each community can expand on that app as much as you want and do with that app however you choose fit. Create additional revenues through the app or merely give it for free. And then the other component which really has nothing to do with the token but that we also try to put it in there because it's all about providing services and trying to fill the need is through the app, we've created a bartering system. So you can literally exchange goods or services through that app on a bartering basis without having to use the token, but it's there, it's facilitated. The whole idea is to get community involvement. In and this way, everybody will hopefully benefit. So in a nutshell, that's the, the token, absolutely. Have you heard of Simbi? I have not heard of Simbi. Is that something similar? Yeah, it's pretty much a talent to exchange community, so similar, but without the token parts. Um, well, I guess they, they call it the units, and then you can kind of trade your units. A graphic design could be worth like 10 units, and personal training could be worth like 50, and mm -hmm. you have enough units, you're like trading services with each other. So it's kind of that same. It's concept. similar. The only thing is that one of the main, the main differences with us is that really the, the, the business model was created with social component to it and I was at you know we're not for you to get tokens from us you can't buy it you 
okay? You would have to either become a founder, which means that you want to become involved in, in growing the, the token, the, the, the network, mm -hmm. or you can become a provider, okay? Um, but you can't buy it. So you have to get actively involved. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, we don't distribute all the tokens to anybody. We have specific segments of providers that we're looking for. And one is that homeless segment, uh, segment which is important. Because if, if we give 20% of the budget, we're talking about 35 million coins and 7 million coins that are specifically designated to that target market. So by giving these tokens, as the network grows and expands, these individuals will be able to exchange those tokens for services and goods. And if it ever... I'm sure we'll sure get into this yeah. after, but there's that just one button, the plug 30, the one minute thing. We have one more speaker. I was going oh, to I'm sorry. I was ask you, uh, how how do the homeless access and use the tokens? Yeah. Okay, so we do it through churches and other nonprofit organizations that already are providing services for the homeless. So we provide the tokens to them, and then they can go ahead mm -hmm. and then exchange the tokens and provide them either actual cash if they ever sell their tokens, or they can provide services where they can accept the tokens and exchange for services are good. So that's one of the ways. The other way is some of the people that are already in there will actually get their tokens and exchange them themselves and provide them cash once they once they've done an exchange for their tokens. Thank you. So, so he actually just won a very competitive uh, contest by Manny Medina and the Tyler position is just as Is, is a decentralized social trading platform. And what it is, is it's, the reason why it's called Tundrax is because we have, we have a firm belief in cold storage, having users have full control and access of their currency and their, and their assets. So uh, we created a decentralized application, which is peer-to-peer. -peer. It connects directly to the blockchain using smart contracts. And you, people can participate in trades uh, without need of any trustless, I mean, without the need of any third party, you know, or like any exchange like Binance or any any mediator who is, you know, uh, have any kind of control or power over your cash, your, your assets. Uh, some of the features that we have here are, um, we're, using some, we're using a lot of technologies that are focused on really decentralizing the platform as a whole. So we're using technology such as atomic swaps, which are cross-chain swaps, like which are uh, cross, I mean, uh, which are currency uh, exchange without the need of a third party. It uses smart contracts. So for example, you can trade a Bitcoin with a, with, with a Litecoin without the need of any, any third party or any matching engine. It's a straight swap. We're also using technology such as atomic liquidity, which basically is uh, taking the liquidity pool and putting it onto, onto the blockchain, making it available for everyone to see and pulling APIs from other chains to connect to this main core. Um, some of the security features that we're using are SHA-3 um, quantum resistant uh, hashing algorithms. We're also using homomorphic encryption schemes for user profiles and vanity key mining. Some, some of these technologies are very, very new, but they're the next level of decentralized applications. It's creating avenues for, basically, think of it as like the next Facebook, taking all your user data 
putting onto the blockchain and giving access and control who can see it and what's watching your token. Yeah, they're your token. Oh, our token is called a FOSS token. It's actually a utility token. Um, the token is used to access the platform. It, it uses, it, you have to stake these tokens into the platform to utilize it, to participate in trades. Uh, there's, also a social, there's also a social component to this, um, it's called social trading, which is basically using people-based portfolios, following expert traders, and participating in their trades as well. So a total beginner can on a platform and start trading as, just like a pro and following along with uh, expert patterns and, and learning too. Oh, cryptocurrencies, market pick assets. Uh, we plan to bring in commodities too as well and also more. So, so it's not like um, services. It's tangible. It's token, yeah. To tokens and cryptocurrencies. Oh. So um, Sam talked about this last class. Who remembers? Atomic swaps. He was talking about how you can trade from one currency to another without having to use an exchange. Mm -hmm. yeah, he did. Yeah. 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 Okay. He did. How are the different things that you trade on this exchange onboarded? Is there like, you know, anybody that has, say, an EOS can go ahead and list that on there and it will know that it's that type of EOS that you can't like list something and have well, a different token? That's not really how it works. The way exchanges work is exchanges list these different kinds of cryptocurrencies. Like, for example, like BitTrex or Binance. They, you know, they reach out to these people, they list their, their, they list their platform on a thing, and then you just can come on and trade and cross trade. It's a similar concept, but the way, what makes us different is that we're doing it in a decentralized manner. There's no central servers that are housing your private keys. There's no central authority who's uh, governing your decisions and what you can and can't do. We're also That's in, my question. We're also like, in, okay, it's decentralized, so how, like, how, do you bring, like, how do you bring currencies into this system? Is it through some centralized thing that says, okay, we're gonna go with these, or? No, it works just like any kind of exchange. We're, we're gonna list. We're gonna list. We're gonna start off by doing EOS airdrops because we are building on the EOS chain. But later on, we're bringing all kinds of currencies. You know, Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash, Ripple, whatever you want. Know. Just bring them all on board. I have a question. Um, I'm, right now, I'm supporting the. I don't know if you know about it. It's called Tron Wedge Market. Yeah. It's kind of like a decentralized exchange for the the Tron Network tokens. Yeah. Is that kind of like how this? It is like that, yo. Know. It's just like Tron. It's kind of like that, but you just um, use your public, your public address to the exchanges from your wallet. You don't need to. The the decentralized exchanges they don't keep your private keys, which is the the mere concern of. Yeah. Right. Yep. Cool. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't hold any private keys. You know, we we plan to just. The, our, our main purpose is uh, we have two missions. One is to onboard new users to the world of crypto. Not a lot of people really understand cryptocurrency how to access it and use it, and even make money on it. So we're creating a social component. This is like the, the Facebook of a current, a cryptocurrency exchanges. That's what Tundrax is. We want to bring a social component where people can engage and teach each other, grow communities, and you know, make money together. And also, safety and security of their assets. So what the question is, how do you like, the, the pitch? So, so SS pitched a lot of, a lot of uh, US pitch contest, can you talk about your pitch and what the uh, judges usually ask you? Oh, for the pitch contest? Yeah, he, he's done a lot of pitches for this, this concept. He's one. Yeah, uh, well, this technology is very new and a lot of people don't understand it too well, but um, in a nutshell, you know, um, in a nutshell, this, this is a, like, a Bitcoin changes the world by doing currency to currency exchange. Ethereum made the next step by creating this new layer and out allowing applications to be built on it. And Web 3.0 is coming a lot faster than we all think it is. Um, a lot of, from, from these pitch concepts, the last one I had, I made a very, I, I talked about a valid point, and not a lot of people knew this though, but the internet started off as a decentralized internet. And then over time, the big fish took over the networks, you know, Google, the Amazon. This is basically a fight to get the internet back to the into the control of, of, of the people. I was gonna ask you, I'm interested in your team. Oh, my team? Your team? Yeah, uh, we, our CEO is Sky Trotter. Uh, he's actually located in uh, he's, he's actually located in Arizona right now. Uh -huh. 
and he's uh, the CEO of Global Crypto Holdings, which is a technology, which is a cryptocurrencies incubator slash uh, consulting firm. I actually work for him as well, and we just consult many different blockchain companies. We're working with some people in London, you know, doing some advertising <coughs> on the blockchain. Just a couple little products here, just to help people, you know, understand and build their technologies out to get a, get a more a deep understanding of how to uh, implement the technology and stuff. Uh, we also have Les Acker, who's a uh, photographer for his work for the for the for the CIA. I guess CIA. He works for the government. He's a, he's a few thirty year old vet. He works for the NSA. He's just, just a genius. You know, I kind of stumbled upon him. He's the reason why we got this, this far. The job is up and running, so we can't. Uh, uh, not yet. We're we're in the process right now of building our MVP. So um, EOS just launched maybe in it launched in June. And the mainnet actually went live in July. So it's been some time now. Not every D app is fully launched yet, which is why I mean, a lot of people are still in anticipation for EOS. But within the next couple of months, you're going to start seeing a lot of D apps launching one by one. So there's two things. Uh, one is uh, we're, we're part of our mission with EOS Miami is you know, to spread the knowledge of EOS and uh, DApps in general is we have an internship program. So if you're interested in any of the companies that presented today and also a lot more are on our, under our umbrella, we're actually, each DApp is actually looking for interns. You guys are obviously super motivated to sign up for a class like this. So just uh, contact me afterwards and I'll put you in touch with uh, uh, either the founders or just someone of those D apps reach out to you and tell you about the opportunities. Um, you definitely should take advantage of that because, I mean, if you had sent a blind email to, to a D app company, you would never get answered. So this is probably a pretty good opportunity to actually show your interest. The second thing is we're starting, you know, we actually have some, some open source projects. That's one of our missions as well. One of them is we're, we're creating one of the, the second wallet for EOS through, through EOS Miami. But our, our EOS wallet's gonna support multiple chains, not just the main nets. That's the only one there. So we actually are in soft beta right now. That's gonna be an open source project. We also have something called the uh, AI Blockchain Alliance. And that's actually gonna be an online conference. It's actually gonna be a pitch to Google type thing. So Google actually has a venture capital arm that, that, that funds just AI projects. So if you have a concept for AI and blockchain, you can actually pitch to Google directly through EOS Miami through our online conference. So that's probably the first time anyone in Miami has actually when is had it? it. What's the date? Uh, we'll, we'll do it soon, but we're gonna do it through um, the, the um, Florida Atlantic University Robotics Lab and also FIU's and the professors there. So it's an online conference, so it's gonna it's gonna be based upon um, the availability of several speakers. So we'll have Google, but also some other well-known speakers as well. So that's, Definitely, you should take advantage of that. Like I know, like earlier, you guys were thinking about doing a pitch, right? This will give you an opportunity to say, well, I'll perfect the pitch of class so that later on, you know, when you pitch to Google, you have all your practice, right? So you definitely should take advantage of this class too. I can't imagine why you wouldn't. You know, this seems like a perfect opportunity to be a good teacher. So definitely do it. And if you don't want to do it, you should also probably should figure out if you really want to do this too. Because you're in this class, I think you want to do it, so just do it. That's entrepreneurship 101. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it and learn. There's always no excuses for not doing it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for the pitches. That was great timing. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a 